So let's talk about the mini business plan, um, which is the fifth step of our innovation breakthrough process. Um, you have now select identified five business concepts for a specific field of play. Of those f business concepts, you have prioritized one business concept to move forward. Okay. In order for you to move forward on that business concept, the first exercise that you did in the previous section was what we call reverse engineering. We basically said, what are all the things which have to work in order for this business concept to be successful? And you created a whole list of, of, of things that had to work that you had to believe had to be true. And from those, you prioritized uh, three of them, which were the most difficult and most challenging. And this is actually one of the easiest steps in the process. You simply say, why won't my idea work? Or talk to somebody else and say, here's my idea, now tell me why it won't work. And the thinking here is, come up with that full list and focus on the hardest ones first. Yeah. And, and here, this is easy, because if you ever come to me and say, tell me why my idea is not going to work, I can give you a hundred reasons. And just capture them quickly. Because if you capture them, and then you organize them, and then you have a meeting with your client, with your, with your leadership team, and they'll say, here's my idea, and you present it. And they'll say, well, did you think about this? Did you think about this? Or think, think about this? And you say, yes. We already brainstormed that list, and we've organized it, and we're going to action plan for that. And so that's what we're going to include now in the last section of the mini business plan. The mini business plan is a blowout of the concept and some of the very specific activities that you need to do next to make sure this business concept can become implementable. And so on this section, I'll let Tyler share with you what are the elements of what we call a mini business plan. And here I just want to emphasize the word mini. We don't want you to move too aggressively forward into a 100-page document. It's supposed to be mini. It's supposed to be able to give more richness to the markets you're targeting, more richness to perhaps the offering, more richness to around some of the, some of the immediate steps that you might want to take, more information with some of the high-level financials. But we are not asking you to do a business plan which has got a details of, 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 of the exact customers, the exact um, size of the markets, what we're trying to say is, are you getting directional data now for us to agree and understand with you what you want to do? So, Tyler, if you would like sure. to expand on that. All right, so let's talk about the individual steps you need to take. Now, as the tender mentioned, one of the first things you need to do is you should have understood what are the key things you need to test. So this is the exercise that says, what do you need to believe to be true? So you go around and ask five people, you know, why is this idea not going to work? And now you organize all those different reasons why it won't work and you want to try and address the most important ones because if you can't tackle the most important or the hardest ones there's no point in doing the easy ones either uh, oftentimes people do it in reverse and they focus on the easy things to test and then they get to the hard thing and they say oh well this idea is no longer going to work yes. so we actually want to flip it yeah so this is where one of our other partners on join actually uses the word do the last experiment first because you don't want to wait to do all the easy things and invest lots of time and dollars and then you come to that last experiment and it doesn't work. Pull the last experiment as the first sets of experiments for you to do and, and learn from that. So what we suggest now for your mini business plan is there's a number of key elements. And what you want to begin with is the concept itself. And you want to display it in some kind of visual way. So in the past, we've seen teams use pictures. We've seen teams use sketches. Uh, going even further, we've seen teams create small prototypes, non-working or paper prototypes, or conduct short videos. Any way to help people understand, this is what I'm trying to sell, and this is why somebody would buy it. After you've been able to visualize the concept, what you want to talk about is, again, why is someone going to buy it? Can you articulate the value proposition? And then the third step is, how are you going to make money? So if we think about those three big areas, what is the concept? How do you visualize it? Why would somebody buy it? and how are you going to make money selling it. We provide some additional key points that you want to include in the mini business plan, and we talk about that in the document. But some other things you might want to include are thinking about the reverse engineering exercise. What are the three major uncertainties you want to talk about? How big is the market? How, how big do you believe the market can get? And it can be a rough estimate. But one, one um, pitfall people run into is they, they don't go to the next level of estimating the market. What they, what they focus on is the broad market as opposed to the addressable market for a particular product. So 
to take the case of this rural market for Chinese healthcare. You know, in the past, teams have said, well, the Chinese government is going to spend $50 billion on healthcare. But the product or service they were talking about was focused on a very small niche of that market. So what was missing was the step to move from $50 billion by the Chinese government down a couple levels to what's an estimate of how much money is going to be spent on that particular segment for that particular group. Okay, so what Tyler is emphasizing over here is at this point you do need to get a little bit into nitty gritty. You do need to be comfortable if somebody were to ask you what is the addressable market. I understand there's a big market over here, but what segment are you targeting? What's the approximate size of that segment? Right? They're, they're going to ask you questions in here also in terms of why would they buy it? And you've got to find compelling reasons why they'll buy it. Why will they give up their money to be able to buy the service or product? And you've got to be able to explain that in a compelling way. Um, you will have to um, talk about, uh, at the end of this thing, you have to make money. And so this is what Tyler was saying is, what's the business model? And, and what we want you to be is clever on this thing because there are many business models on how you can make money. And it doesn't just have to be, you know, make something for a low cost and sell it for a high price. There are many other business models which are around that, which will allow you to capture that value, which may be that you might get money from somebody else to pay for something which you will manufacture and somebody else will benefit. There are many different business models out there. You want to be smart about how you think about that. And, 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 and ultimately with the business model, you have to provide a credibility or, 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 or a credible path on that we can take steps to get this idea moving forward. And there's this thing called action plan. Think what will we do next to move this forward? What might be the investment? What might be the teams we need to get it going? Uh, what might be the partnership we want to forge to get this thing moving forward? So just give an indication in terms of how can we get going? And, and, and that will get you closer to what we would call a mini business plan. And I think the, with the action plan, another way to think about it is if your senior management said, we love the idea, here's a million dollars, what would be the first five or six things you would do with that million dollars? Would you conduct a market research study? Would you look into partnering? Would you hire some new team members? Um, or another way to look at it is, what if you didn't have any money? What if you said, you can do this, but all you have is your time and the resources on your team? So what kinds of things could you do without money?